Shalom, shalom, peace. Peace unto everybody today. May the Lord fill your homes with his wonderful love and joy. And uh, well, we're here to get together to go together tonight uh, once again, as always, giving Jesus, our Lord and Savior, all the honor and glory and thanksgiving for the sacrifice that he has done for us in our place. He died on the cross. Hi, Barbara. And took our place. So we are honoring him tonight and every night. Amen. So if it's your first time joining, welcome. My name is Julie. Um, go ahead and grab your elements if you're going to join tonight in partaking in remembrance of the Lord. Your juice, water, your cracker, or your bread. Uh, I am earlier today. I just thought it'd be a, a <laughs> hi. I thought it would be a good idea to come a little earlier since I was feeling like I want to do it earlier today. So it's it's recorded so anybody can watch it. It's always available. Um, but uh, we're going to pray and then we're going to go right into the study. And I pray the Lord bring you a revelation of Jesus and the, and the finished work of the cross. What he's done for you tonight. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, that every day we wake up, we know it's a blessing, Lord, that we get to live to see another day because you have a great plan for our lives. Thank you, Lord, that we are so blessed with family, friends, and all the people around us. All we have to do is look around, Lord, and we can see your wonderful glory displaying, speaking to our hearts. Father God, I pray that each and every person tonight receive from Jesus and thank you for the precious gift of your son, Father God. Bless this time tonight. And Holy Spirit, we say you are welcome here. Speak to us. Fill our atmosphere with you and your power. Display your love and peace in our hearts as we come together honoring Jesus. It's all in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, I'm sure Paula probably is busy, and that's okay. She. <laughs> And by the time we're done with our doing the communion, we'll do our prayer earlier tonight. Amen. Hi, Angel. Mwah, I love you. <laughs> so, um, let's go ahead and get into the study tonight. And here we are, reading from My Utmost for His Highest by Oswald Chambers. This has been a wonderful book. We're getting closer and closer to the end of it, and it's so awesome. God is so good. He never ceases to amaze me and what he's going to teach me. So let's see what he's saying tonight. Matthew 9.38 is where we're reading from. But the top, it says the key to the master's orders. Well, does the Lord have something for us today? Let's find out. It says, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Amen. This is one of our scriptures for prayer, right, Barbara? Amen. Every time we come together in prayer, we have this prayer, Matthew 9, 38, for everyone who does not know the Lord. This is a great scripture, you guys. Write it down if you know anyone who needs salvation. Matthew 9, 38, the Lord is speaking tonight. This is the, the scripture to pray for those who are lost. Amen. Amen. So let's see what it says in this wonderful book. It says the key to the missionary's difficult task is in the hand of God. And that key is prayer, not work. That that is okay. Not work as the word is commonly used today, which is often result. It often results in the uh, shifting of our focus away from God. Okay. The key to the missionary's difficult task is all is also not the key of common sense, nor is it the key of medicine, civilization, education, or even evangelism. Okay, evangelization. The key is in following the master's order. The key is prayer, you guys. We've been doing this. I've been saying this. Thank you, Lord. The, the Holy Spirit's talking tonight, and he is emphasizing prayer. Pray of the Lord of the harvest. In the natural realm, prayer is not practical, but absurd. Yeah. We have to realize that prayer is foolish from the common sense point of view. From Jesus Christ's perspective, there are no nations, but only the world. 
Amen. Amen. How many of us pray without regard to the persons, but with regard to only one person, Jesus Christ? You know, did you capture that here? How many of us pray without regard to the persons, but with regard to only one person, Jesus Christ? He owns the harvest that is produced through distress and through conviction of sin. Ooh, this is the harvest for which we have to pray that laborers be sent out to reap. We stay busy at work while people all around us are ripe and ready to be harvested. We do not reap even one of them, but simply waste our Lord's time in an over uh, energized activities and programs. Did you hear that? We don't reap one of them, but simply waste our Lord's time in over-energized activities and programs. Suppose, suppose a crisis were to come into your father's or your brother's life. Are, um, are there, it says here, okay, are you there as a laborer to reap the harvest for Jesus Christ? Is that, is, is your response, oh, but I have special work to do. Do you do that? No. Christian, no Christian has a special work to do. Did you hear that? No Christian has a special work to do. A Christian is called to be Jesus Christ's own. You guys, if you don't know, this is what you're called to be Jesus Christ's own. A servant who is not greater than his master, John 13, 16, and someone who's, who does not dictate to Jesus Christ what he intends to do. Our Lord calls us to no special work. He calls us to himself. Amen. Pray the Lord of the harvest, and he will engineer your circumstances to send you out as his laborer. Amen. What a, this is nice. I like this today. What a great um, teaching for today, right? A little study, the Holy Spirit speaking, and prayer is the key and salvation, you guys. Matthew 9, 38. We've been saying it and saying it over and over again. So write it down. Start praying for salvation over the people, your family or friends or people around your neighborhood. Let's pray for the nation and the world. Amen. For Israel, for the Jewish people. Many of them don't know salvation, and they are the very first ones that God created. Oh, boy. All right. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. So here we go. We're going to have our love letter right now. Let's see how the Lord is going to love on us. I love this book. It's always a joy, and the presence of the Lord always comes and just fills my heart up when I read this book. And he says here, my child, be real with me. You are precious and beautiful to me. You never need to pretend to be something other than who I made you to be. I don't want you to try to impress me by pretending that all is perfect in your life, my child. I want you to find great freedom in being real with me. The more real you become, the better you will relate to others. No more pretending, my beloved. I love you just the way you are, and I want you to be real with me in all that you do and say. I gave my life for you so you could live free to be yourself. Don't let anyone steal your joy by turning you into something fake. Be true to yourself and be true to me because I love the real you. Love your true king. Amen. 2 Corinthians 3, 17 is the scripture. Now, the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Amen. Hallelujah. You guys are looking for freedom in this world. Well, I want to tell you there is no freedom. Jesus Christ is the only freedom. Amen. And we see that here tonight. He's expressing that. Yes, he is. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I'm sorry. I love it. I love it. Thank you, Lord. Uh, so right now, if you're just joining, I want to ask you to hit the like Hit the share button. Share Jesus Christ, the gospel, the salvation. He came to die for you and give you the eternal life and salvation. There's no other person that could do this for you. So I'm just honored that the Lord chose me to do this. 
Amen. Hi, Paula. <laughs> I've got my hair keeps just making me itch over here. Um, okay, so I am very honored because God has chose me to chosen me to do this, and I just. I know that he works in me and he's doing something great. No matter, even if I make a mistake, he's there to lift me back up and put me back on the right path. And I'm so grateful. <laughs> and he's there for you too. But you guys, I'm going to read some scriptures. If you're just joining, grab your elements. We're about to take the communion. So amen, amen. Let's go right into the scriptures. In Psalms 91, 9 through 11, it says here, Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. Oh, praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. I love Psalms 91. He says, For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. Keep the Lord near to you because this is where we have the freedom. Right here, you make him your refuge and he is the most high. Amen. In your life, your habitation, he's the secret place. Amen. No evil can befall you and plagues cannot come near wherever you go. I love that part of the scripture. So no matter what's going on right now in this world, Take God's word and put that in your heart and just hold on to it every time they start to say something about COVID. I'm going to tell you right now, Jesus is the name above all names. He's above COVID and he is your protector and your savior. Amen. Rely and trust on Jesus everywhere you go. You're protected. Amen. All right. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And I have my handwritten word of 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 God here, which it says, the Lord is our righteousness, Jehovah Tiskanu. This is another name of our Lord, our righteousness. That's what it means. Jehovah Tiskanu. Amen. Then we have Hebrews 6, 11 through 12. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end, that ye be not slothful, but followers of them, who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Oh, I like the scripture. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. And we want all of that promises. Amen. <laughs> okay. Psalms 29, 11 says the Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. That's right. Do you need peace tonight and strength? Amen. Well, it comes from the Lord. This is a different kind of peace. I don't even think this world is, has a peace. To me, this world doesn't have anything to offer me. It's only Jesus that has saved me. That's it. Praise the Lord. Jeremiah 17, 7 says, Blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. Amen. Amen. That goes well. Amen. With what I just said. The Holy Spirit always knows how to move and he knows just what's in store before I do because I don't plan these scriptures or what I'm reading. I just go by the day and God, the Holy Spirit blesses us. Amen. Acts 10 43 says everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. That's right. It must be through the name of Jesus Christ. Yeshua HaMashiach, Yahweh. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for those who believe. That's right. They will receive forgiveness. Now, also, Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. That's right. When you receive salvation, oh, it's Christ who lives in you. There's everything we have in us is dead. We don't come alive until we receive that hope of glory. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly, Heavenly Spirit, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for Jesus, for the word of God. Thank you for your scriptures, Lord. Thank you that you love us and you just shed new light on our hearts every day. Father God, we ask you to just take these scriptures, engrave them in our hearts, that we would be 
a beaming light shining to this world that we could speak life into them because your word is truth and life. Father God, thank you that you continue to work on each and every one of us, that you're blessing our time as we come together, honoring Jesus, the finished work of the cross, remembering what he's done for us in our place. We give you all praise and thanks and honor. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. So now what we're going to do is we are going to take the communion. Now the bread or the cracker that you have represents the Lord's body. Jesus subjected his body to be beaten, to be bruised, battered, and he received many lashes that tore his skin off of his body. That's right. He, his skin was ripped off his body. That he did this so that you can receive health, his health, his restoration, the healing. It's everything that he is, he gives to us. And he received everything that we have, which is sickness, diseases, all these things. He conquered them for us there on the cross and with the beatings, the lashes. And we can take glory tonight when we hold up the bread. This is how you discern his body. Jesus' body was broken so you can be restored unto health and newness of life. He makes all things new. Praise God. Then the, uh, the drink here that we're taking, the water or juice, represents his blood. Jesus' blood is sinless blood. It is not tainted. It is pure. This is the, the most beautiful sacrifice of love and display. He loved us so much that he did this for us. And it's a beautiful thing. It's a lovely thing. It's a lovely thing. Um, he did this to, to remove our sins. Every sin that you'd ever commit or do, every fault, every failure in your lifetime, it's covered by his blood. Amen. If you don't know this wonderful Savior, I want to share with you tonight. Receive salvation. You can message me. We can pray together. And you can receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Okay, so let's get into this together and partake in remembrance of what the Lord Jesus has done for us. In 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three through 26, let's read together. In the word of God, it says, For I received from the Lord that which I also deliver to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread and he prayed over this. He gave thanks unto the Father. And he broke it and he passed it around to the disciples. And he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And that's exactly what we're doing, what he's telling us to do in remembrance of what Jesus did for us tonight. So hold that bread up and see Jesus there at the whipping post. He took lash after lash for you and me so that we can be made whole, be made new, restored into the newness of life. By his wounds, we are healed. Receive that tonight. Lay whatever it is at his feet that you have, that you're carrying. Lay it at the feet of Jesus and do the divine exchange right now. Father, we thank you, Jesus. Amen for your broken body. We thank you for bearing our symptoms and sicknesses at the cross so that we may have your health and wholeness. Amen. We declare that by your stripes, by the beatings that you bore, and by the lashes that fell on your back, we are completely healed. We believe and we receive your resurrection life in our bodies today. So let us eat his flesh together. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. So you're going to grab your, your juice, your water, whatever you have there. Hold it up. 
and you're going to see Jesus there on that cross. Jesus was nailed to the cross with his hands and his feet and the crown of thorns were beaten into his head. His side was pierced and all the blood that flowed out of Jesus' body is the sinless blood that's made you righteous, that's paid for all your sins. Your debt is paid, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Praise God. You can rejoice coming to the throne of God with your prayers and petitions. And you're cleansed, you're washed by the blood of Jesus, covered. And God receives your petitions and prayers and answers you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We thank you, Jesus, for your blood that has washed us whiter than snow. Your blood has brought us forgiveness and made us righteous forever. And as we drink, we celebrate and partake of the inheritance of the righteous, which includes preservation, healing, wholeness, and all of your blessings. So let us drink his blood together. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for Jesus. Amen. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's my identity. That's who I am. It's no longer me who lives. It's Christ who lives in me. You know, if you can just continuously re say it over and over again every day, because when we speak things into existence, we believe what we speak. Start speaking who you are. Then you will walk in, in a clear conscience and the enemy cannot come near you. You will know when he's coming and planning his attack because the Holy Spirit will prompt you. And because you're walking in the spirit, it's like that, that you can hear the Lord tell you, this is not for me. This is not who you are. Amen. You're a new creation in Christ Jesus. The blood of Jesus has set you free. Amen. Walk in that newness of life. Claim your victory because Christ won it for you at the cross and it is valid ever, forever, and evermore. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. You guys, I love you so much. Thank you for joining tonight. I'm here every night, usually between six. I came a little earlier, six and nine. I came earlier, but that's okay. It is recorded. You guys, I love you. Thank you for joining me tonight and giving Jesus honor. It's all to him we owe. We can never be thankful enough. I'm going to pray and close out. We're going to do our prayer uh, warriors. So if you guys need prayer, you need anything, message me. Let's, let's do it together. Let's pray for the nation, the world. Amen. As in earlier, the Holy Spirit speaking, Matthew 9, 38. <laughs> Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you for the wonderful uh, gift of Jesus. Thank you, Father, that you chose us and you wanted us. We're, we're so delighted in that, Lord, that you love us so much. Father God, bless each and every person who's gathered here tonight, Lord, that's honoring Jesus and being obedient unto you, Lord, looking and hoping and expecting and putting all their trust in you. I pray, Lord, you lift the, the burden off their hearts and Holy Spirit, you would move in their into their homes and that you would speak to them. Whatever situation that's going on tonight, Lord, whatever's weighing heavy on their hearts, I just pray that you bless them, move through them, and Father, give them a revelation of Jesus and the finished work. There's always something new we learn about Jesus, and it's beautiful. We thank you, Lord, for the life you've given us. It's all in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen, you guys. Be a light. Uh, sprinkle the salt out there. <laughs> oh, boy, and spread the gospel. Jesus is coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. Praise God he's coming. I cannot wait. Keep looking up. Your redemption's draw is near. Let's spread the gospel, you guys. I love you. Good night. <laughs>